Hey there, thanks for stopping by. It's Rich with Rich Bound Photography with some more tips and tricks for real estate photography. And uh, I'm going to go with the subject that uh, people always can use more help with. And this is how to let ambience, the ambient exposure, help you with what I call the heavy lifting. Or if you have a very large area, a large room like this, we would all have rooms like this probably all the time. And um, we could go back there with lights, pop flashes here, and we could do umbrellas. We have, a, I did do one light up here, but sometimes we don't have the ability, the time, the, uh, you know, the strength to, uh, we have an agent that's waiting, tapping his foot. So we got to get in and out as quick as possible. So I'm just going to show you this technique. Uh, I think I've showed it before, but I'm really going to show it this time. Really going to help you um, learn how to shoot and think about getting an ambient shot so you can mask in different parts. You can shoot different parts and mask in different parts. So it's not an unbelievable shot, not a, a portfolio shot, but it's a room that we would all have. And that's what I emphasize is day-to-day -day real estate stuff. So stuff we would come up against all the time. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to show you what shots I took to get this final shot. So I'm going to start off with my ambient shot. I tend to always shoot my ambient shot first. So when I bring it in the Lightroom and then I export it into Photoshop, the, uh, the ambient shot is right where I want it to go into my masking, as you'll see. Okay, so we've got the ambient shot and I'm going to just go back to straight out of camera. So this is right out of camera, a little overexposed, but what I wanted it for is this area in here I wanted it exposed for this back room because with this shot I knew and this is my lit shot but on the final shot you could see I had an idea that I was going to have enough light there but I needed light right here so I'm going with my ambient shot right here okay all I'm going to do on the ambient shot is to take the highlights down a little bit of uh, shadow going to bring it a little black down, a little clarity that way. I'm going to bring down the saturation to make it a little more like the lit shot. And I'm going to go down here to dehaze and I'm going to give it a little bit of dehaze to give it a little bit of crispness. Okay, so I can live with that and I think it's going to mask in fairly well. Okay, I'm going to also use other parts like this doorway. I'm going to use it too to get some, I'll show you in a second, to get rid of some glare that's going to be on the lit shot. I'm not going to use it mainly for the table. I'll use the lit shot for that. So let me go into the room shot. Here is the room shot. I've got one Streak Light 360 up here above camera, and it didn't do a great job of lighting. Like this would never be a straight out of camera shot or without doing uh, masking in. But I had a very difficult time with this room. It was much more difficult than I would have ever thought. And we had a lot of light streaming in. It just was not cooperating. So I've lit this and let me make sure I'm going back to reset so I can show you. This is straight out of camera. I've got uh, dark here. I've got shine here. I've got, um, you know, it's, it's not bad. But what I'll do here is to fix it in Lightroom. I try and make all my images individually the exactly the best I can make them for what I'm going to use them for. So I'm going to go with my real estate full bump, or I've been known as calling it my special sauce. So I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. I'm going to bring up the saturation a little bit. And uh, I'm going to be pretty happy with the way it is right here and keep it simple. Okay, and the third shot I'm going to get because... These globes are a little burned out, and I actually didn't get an exposure specifically for these lamps. But what I'm going to do here is just take it. Let me get back to reset straight out of camera. I'm going to take these and I'm going to fix them so I can use just the globes, mask it in into the final composite. So I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit, make it a little warmer. Bring the highlights down and I'm going to bring this up and you can see these globes now look like what I would use them for. I may actually take them a little bit less red. Okay, and maybe just a little darker exposure. Great, so we have our three images. We have our lit shot. We have our globe shot or our light masking in shot, blown out lights. And then we have our ambient. So let's make a right click. Let's edit in. 
open as layers in Photoshop and give it a minute and we'll be right back. Okay, it's opening up now and then as we do, uh, I will show you how to arrange the layers and this works for as many layers as you want to do. Three layers is nice because it shows you a little more than two layers. So it's a little more complicated, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Now we're going to start and we're going to name the layers because I'm going to turn off everything except the top layer so you know that's the only one showing. And this is the ambient shot. So I'm just going to do AMB. So I know that's ambient. Now I'm going to turn this off. The next one down is going to be the globe shot. And you can name it anything you want, doesn't really matter. And this one we know is going to be the room shot because it's the last one. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to mask in the ambient light, the ambience into this shot. So what I'm going to do is bring ambient just above room and globe is going to be up high. I'm going to not turn it on. I will turn on the ambient though. So right now you see it's on top, but when we make a layer mask, it's going to go below and we're going to paint it in. So I'm going to go here with no further ado. Whoops, I said that already. Okay, I want to add a layer mask. And as we always do, option on a Mac, hold down Alt on a PC. There we go. Okay, so now we have the lit shot up and we want to mask in the ambient. And where can we use the ambient most? We need to get this brighter, the ceiling. We've got a ceiling fan shadow here. Not the fan, I'm sorry, the lights here. We've got the sh shine here. We could use a little more exposure here, a little more in this doorway, with a little more. So let me go back in the Lightroom. You can see we can use all these parts are right there. All the elements are right there. Okay, so we're going to start with that. Go back to Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to go as always, I'm going to go white paintbrush, I'm going to go a paintbrush here, and I'm going to do a soft brush, okay, and I'm going to do flow, I'm going to do 4%, but I would actually suggest if you're doing this, I would use 3%, but 4 is going to just speed it up a little bit. It seems like it's very little, but trust me, it goes a long way. So let me just go into this back section. So again, we want to get rid of the shine, we want to improve the exposure. We don't want to touch the lights, so we're going to over, we're going to mask them out, but we're going to bring them back. We want a little more exposure here, and then we'll come into here and brighten that up. So I've got, again, I've got 4%, and I'm just going to do brush about that big, and I'm going to start with the ceiling. There we go. Look at that, huh? Okay, now let's get a little more light in the kitchen. Beautiful. Okay. Now, if you had lights back there and you were doing a light pop, it's going to be a better quality of your light. I will agree. But this is another workaround, another way to do it. And um, it's a good trick to know. And later on in my uh, tutorials, I'm going to get more into actual light popping. Some people call it light painting, but we'll do individual composites. So I'm going to get rid of the shine right here. Okay. There we go. Now I'm doing a normal mask instead of a luminosity mask because I don't mind the colors coming in here. So get a little bit of brightness there. Good. Now what I want to do is let me come out just a little bit. Okay, right here. So I want to now work on the rest of the ceiling. Bring in a little light there, a little light there. Oh, I want to get rid of this ceiling, ceiling lamp shadow. Okay, there we go. Got rid of it. A little more brightness there. Now, I want to go to, hold on a second. Sorry. I want to get a little more light in here. Brightness here. Good. Okay. So, my ceiling's looking good. A little warm from that lamp, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay. So, now, what I want to do here is I want to get a little bit of ambience in here because it looks very much like it slipped from camera, but it's not totally bad. Let me just get rid of a little bit. Now look under the table. I'm going to bring in some ambient there. Let me bring this in a little bit. Show you. Here we go. A little bit of brightness under there. Make it look less like it was lit from above. And 
and uh, you can see the shadows, natural shadows coming in the leg of the table. Okay, and there we go. Now, the other thing too is I've got a little bit of shine here from the light, from the lamp. I'm using the, the uh, My Light, the Streak Light 360. Get rid of that one, get rid of that one. Now, you can go as, as far, as much, as little as you want to go. It's really up to you. People say it takes too long to do. It doesn't really. It takes me a little longer for, um, for my uh, tutorials because I'm showing you how to do it. But uh, that didn't take long at all. So it would really take me about two to three minutes to do this uh, from start to finish. And this is longer than most. Most uh, shots take me about a minute and a half to two minutes. Okay, now what I want to do is put in the globes. So I'm going to take the globe shot. I'm going to drag it above the room shot. I'm going to turn on the, uh, the layer so we can see what we're doing. Okay, now what I want to do is if I turn that off, you can see it's not going to be bringing in a lot, but you can see it's just bringing in a little bit. Okay, so let me turn this on and it's highlighted. Let me go into add a layer mask or hold down option on a Mac, Alt on a PC. Now there's several ways we could mask. All we're going to do is paint in that exposure. So we could enlarge it here and there's several things we could do. We could um, use a polygonal tool up here right here to do straight lines. Let me wait right here. We could do like lines like this, like that, like that. And I would probably shoot myself. Okay, so let's uh, deselect that. We could also just go in here. I'll do a paintbrush and I'm going to raise this up to 50% opacity. And we could just paint in this, right? There we go. They're getting that exposure in there. Oh, it looks beautiful, huh? except for it's really hard to do a nice paint job in there. So that's not going to work. So one other tool, and I don't know if I've ever done this on a tutorial, but it's the magic wand tool, not the quick selection. Now we could use quick selection and we could easily select that. And that's not bad at all, but I'm going to show you, I want to go because that can be funky sometimes. I want to go and take that back and okay here we go I want to do the magic wand tool okay so all we have to do is put it over your what you're gonna to try to try and select hold down shift and then click click it over here and we're holding down shift so it's going to continually doing it there we go we go in here 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 so as always, there's many ways to do things. This is just what works for me, and you may not like it, but uh, that's okay, because really, it's whatever works for you. And uh, I am so pleased that I get feedback from people saying I actually help them, and uh, it means a lot to me. So I like doing it, and uh, we got some big things coming up in the future, and that'll be uh, coming later anyway. And I'm going to do one more right here. Okay, we're selected, so all I have to do is go paintbrush, and I'm just going to put it into 50%. I could do 100, but I'm just going to do 50, and then just paint over it. Bam. Okay, so that's not bad. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into select, and I'm going to modify, feather my selection about, uh, about 7 pixels, just to soften up my selection. Okay? I click uh, Command-D to deselect it, and there you go. That's not too hard. Didn't take too long. Um, so, without further ado, I say again, because it's such a great saying. Oh, you know one thing I didn't do? Oh, let me put a little light in this doorway. So we're going back to the ambient shot, so we can go back to where we were. And I'm going to click down the ambient mask, and I'm going to go back to 4% paint and let's just paint in a little light right there look at that nice so you can go back in and do what you need okay and then I don't know if I got this in here okay I'm just gonna a little bit ambient there there we go okay and there we have it so I'm gonna bring it back into a uh, Lightroom I'm gonna do command S and W and that's going to save it and bring it back into Lightroom. 
right where it was. It's saving it right here, you can see. That also tells you down there how big your file is, how massive your file is. Okay, so the only thing I'm gonna do here, and I always spend a moment with my image after I bring it back. Why well, here, I wanna do a few things. I'm going to lower the exposure down just a little bit. Whoops, there we go. I'm going to give it a little bit of contrast, take down the blacks a little bit, and a little bit of clarity. Actually, I'm going to raise up the exposure just a bit right there. And there you have it. Not perfect, but it's going to do, and it is totally deliverable. Um, we got the lights there. We did the um, exposure in there looks natural to me. In there, you could have put a uh, photo on the screen. You could have done a lot of things. I could have actually brightened this up. But this lighting in here is great because that's natural from the window. I didn't do any of that. And it looks pretty natural underneath the table. It looks good. I could definitely do some work out here, but that's for another story. Anyway, the globes look really good, I think. Uh, definitely better than uh, what they look like in, uh, in the lit shot right here. So we went from this lit shot to this shot. There we go. There you go. Okay. So this is Rich Baum with Rich Baum Photography saying thank you very much. We got some really exciting stuff coming up really, really quickly. A lot of people have been wanting to see some, some other stuff and it's going to be happening, but I can't really, don't really want to talk about it yet. Anyway, feel free to add your comments, your questions. I try and get to you. A lot of people have been finding me and sending me emails. People are even calling me. And I really appreciate it. I'm really, really happy to be making a difference and helping you uh, move your game up to shoot better, smarter, faster, and uh, aspire to do the bigger jobs. So anyway, Rich Baum, Rich Baum Photography, signing off. See you later.